वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला टुडे वील डू अ मॉड्यूल ऑन फेमिनिस्ट पोस्ट मॉडर्न थियरीज दिस इज एज पार्ट ऑफ द कोर्स ऑफ ऑन जेंडर एंड सोशल वर्क आई एम डॉक्टर शिवली कुमार एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर स्कूल ऑफ सोशल वर्क टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसिस फेमिनिस्ट पोस्ट पोस्ट मॉडर्न फेमिनिज्म इज टूडे ऑफ कंटेम्प्ररी रेलिवेंस एंड देर फोर द टॉपिक्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल आर थियरीज दैट इन्फॉर्म पोस्ट मॉडर्न फेमिनिज्म स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म पोस्ट स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म एंड पोस्ट मॉडर्न फेमिनिज्म एंड फाइनली अ समेशन ऑफ ऑल द थेरेटिकल फ्रेमवर्कस एंड कॉन्सेप्ट Let's get on with postmodern feminism. Postmodern feminism and feminist theories have uh, been seen as grounded uh, in uh, not just postmodernist theories but also structuralism and post-structuralism and French feminist theories. Uh, it's very uh, interesting to see that in the contemporary world with the unpacking of various uh, um, economic structures the uh, lowering of protect protectionist regimes postmodern uh, theories become even more relevant for feminist uh, uh, mobilization and dimensions so uh, in in uh, different ways uh, there is a lot of opportunity uh, to use these frameworks to uh, do gendered uh, social work uh, all these theories have emerged actually simultaneously and have also influenced each other so most of the theorists have met discussed debated talked over what they see the world like and what they see as uh, uh, as differences and uh, uh, marginalization within different parts of the country and uh, different parts of the world uh, so uh, there has been parallel processes of theorizations and they have come together at different points of time so that's the interesting and rich variety of postmodernist theories which uh, feminists have found very useful in explaining the diverse structures in the society while the earlier theory theorization of feminist theor uh, theorizations would tend to locate one or two dimensions uh, postmodernist uh, theories have given feminists an opportunity to look at the diversities that exist in the world over and in the societies uh, over uh, because that is what informs people's uh, life and specifically women's lives in the locations where they live the uh, the ways in which they live the meaning that they draw from their uh, everyday experiences and that is something that uh, uh, postmodernism has given uh, the feminists an opportunity to understand they also provide an opportunity to shape and promote new ideas so what they have, the postmodernist theories have done very interestingly is uh, they have broken up this notion that theory has to be scientific and uh, structured so they have broken those boundaries and when they have done that feminists have found this a great opportunity to look at uh, women uh, women's issues from the women's point of view herself and uh, when they do that then theorization changes and new theories emerge and new ideas come out from uh, mobilizing such women and women's movements and women's voices and that is something that's very interesting in today's world and uh, feminists continue to work from different locations with different diverse uh, possibilities and uh, opportunities uh, to address women's uh, problems and issues let's talk about structuralism now Uh, uh before we go into postmodernism because uh, the historic trajectory is that structuralism is uh, the first process that began to unpack the existing systems what were uh, held on as very precious by most people and to say that this is how the society should function and this is how these uh, structures need to keep the world in a ordered uh, fashion so that order was questioned first by the structuralist structuralism attempts to study the organizational structure and its relations as the complex system of interlinked parts that is that uh, uh, how a different structures say for example uh, you are in a uh, industrial organization but the industrial organization is complicated by different uh, uh, ways in which uh, uh, work is done in that particular industrial organization but each one is not an isolated part each each one functions and operates in tandem with the rest similarly what a structuralist say the society also works in tandem with the rest of the structures and each one feeds into the other to create either oppression or 
possibilities of liberation. So uh, structuralism uh, essentially focuses on all these di different structures and how they work together and mesh together and create different possibilities of power and disempowerment. It was developed in 20th century by uh, a Swiss uh, linguist uh, theorist. So uh, one has to remember structuralism is also grounded in the notion of language and language that can oppress or liberate or can be uh, deconstructed. So Sarsour was the first one who used it uh, and later on uh, used it and theorized around it as a linguist and later on it was expanded by sociologists, psychoanalysts and anthropologists because it was a good opportunity to say that the discipline of language or the order of language could also be broken up. So it's not necessary to speak a, a sentence or speak a language the way it has been uh, passed on from generation to generation. It can be changed and new languages can be developed, new words can be developed and from there it became that new structures within the society can also be created and new ideas can be percolated. So structuralists therefore advocate that thoughts and perceptions are not natural rather they are constructed by language so when we talk or communicate we have a certain way of uh, understanding our thoughts we have a certain way of perceiving the world uh, around so it has a deep uh, philosophical um, understanding and location to say that I may call this table a table but uh, somebody else may say that no I don't want to call it a table because I perceive it as a desk or somebody else may say that I see it as a reading material. Uh, in, in most cases it will be right according to the structure lists and the way they look at uh, language. So uh, that is what is interesting about uh, the structure list theories and therefore language is something that is critical to give meaning to everything. So in, in that case no text or no writing is right or wrong. There can be different ways of expressing your experiences, there can be different ways of experiencing the world and therefore structuralists would rather look at signs, communications and symbols as understanding the world uh, and the world order or disorder as they would like to say. Some prominent structuralists are, as I, we have earlier seen, Marx, Levi-Strauss, uh, Levi uh, Dessauer, uh, Lacan, Piaget and Freud. These theorists have em emphasized the significance of language in building power relations. That is very interesting because uh, in the western world, for example, let me take the language English. Now English uh, came in with the imperialistic uh, uh, progression of uh, the British who wanted to conquer the world and some of the European nations who came to different parts of the country uh, of uh, uh, other nations and uh, they started educating people uh, in, into English language and in, in, in many ways hegemonized English, left it behind and said that this is the language which is the uh, language of the uh, civilized and other languages are savage, unreal and not really good enough. So created a hierarchy of language in that sense uh, it's important to understand that that is not necessary. Structuralists have really helped us to interrogate this notion of domination by language and uh, the sig significance of language in building that power. So when British came into India they left behind a realm of ideas, notions of what is civilized and what is not civilized. So language was one of them. With that came the symbols of uh, you know uh, wearing certain kind of dresses. So you are an English person, you behave like an English person even though you are Indian. So you become civilized. So in that case how does language actually create this kind of power relations? So the, uh, those, uh, those uh, men who were British educated or Western education were more accepted and became more powerful and elite in the Indian society. But those who were living in the villages speaking their own uh, uh, dialect or their own kind of languages remained savages and therefore marginalized in the society. And this kind of uh, uh, power continues to operate in our country and that is critical for us to remember that this kind of notion, idea and interrogation has been possible because the structuralist said that language is one form of domination. 
To do so, they have developed and proposed a system of thoughts which provide lawful and explanatory deep structures. So, structuralists also enjoin upon every person to start looking at language and start thinking what is lawful and what is not, what is right and what is wrong, what is abuse and what is not abuse, what is different and what is uh, same, what is homogeneous and what's creating hegemony within that language. And that is something that uh, really gives us an opportunity to say that all languages have different ways of looking at the world. They have different words to depict uh, uh, the people and the science and the wo world that they see. So in that case, uh, structuralists help us unpack uh, the hegemonies of language, hegemonies of one language or two languages or maybe three languages in different societies, communities and also being propagated by the state as a powerful agent of uh, hegemony in case of language. These theories have em uh, emphasized uh, that uh, the significance of language as I mentioned in building power relations. To do so, uh, they have also said that, uh, that it's important when this interrogation of uh, this hegemony happens, how do you look inside? How do you create uh, more uh, understanding of why does a particular language give power and privilege and why a particular language uh, kind of uh, does not privilege. So uh, for example, if a Marathi speaking uh, student comes to, uh, uh, to uh, Mumbai to study, there is a perception that the Marathi speaking student will bring in that I do not know English. In most cases, they will say that I do not know English because there is a hegemony and a power that comes with English. I want to learn English. Why? Because then he is able to access information and ideas and also be part of those corridors which uh, create and dominate over them. So in that case, uh, how do we ensure that uh, a student is able to uh, respect his own language, his or her own language, uh, also able to understand that that language is as significant and as perhaps English or maybe Hindi or any other dominant language in that particular institutional framework. So that interrogation is what we are talking about when we talk of deep structures, to be able to understand societal frameworks which create this goodness, badness, good or bad and language domination. Structuralists were followed up by post-structuralists who therefore transformed structuralism by advocating that the meanings and language uh, that language produces are unstable. So structuralists essentially, structuralists essentially talked about uh, 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 systems and they talked about a logic in uh, understanding uh, uh, language and their meanings. But post-structuralists problematized structuralist ideas and they said that no language or no uh, meaning is the same for anyone. And that means they destabilize the whole notion of uniformity, the whole notion of uh, uh, progression, progression. That's a very discomfort, uh, discomforting position to be in. And they, they, they also, at the same time, it gives us a lot of opportunity to say that, hey, my language perhaps has more meaning than I've never looked at it. I need to go back and understand maybe say Bengali much better than what was taught uh, the Bengali that is per uh, prevalent in Kolkata, I perhaps need to go and look at Bengali that's spoken in Midnapur or some other remote village and interrogate uh, what is powerful and what is uh, seen as homogeneous in Bengali. So I'm just problematizing the whole notion as to what proposed structuralists really talked about to say that there are multiple meanings, there are multiple ways of looking at the world and multiple interpretations that can come, be brought through. So uh, uh, Derrida was one of the foremost uh, post structuralists and he brought in the notion of difference. That when you talk about uh, two kinds of uh, situations or two ways of looking at the work, you talk of logocentricism and logocentricism it needs to be taken away because then it creates a binary and then, then it creates a hierarchy as to who's better and who's less, uh, the way, you know, uh, perhaps interrogating Marx would. So in that case, uh, uh, therefore, when there are differences, then there are differences in different languages, not just that, the same language can be uh, read or understood differently by different people from different locations where they come from. So for example, which I often often share is that uh, the word by in itself is a Hindi word and uh, 
Marathis use it very respectfully for women. But uh, if, if the same word is used in Uttar Pradesh in certain locations, then it is supposed to be an abuse because it connotes a prostitute. So uh, how do we therefore look at the diversities that are there within one language? So that is what Derrida spoke, to, uh, spoke about and said that there are dichotomies, but more than dichotomies, there are differences. And therefore, we don't need to look at the language from a uh, binary position, rather look at diversities. So language symbolizes and sustains the symbolic order is something that the post uh, structuralists talk about. One is the formal order that we, we talk about in terms of state, system, bureaucracy and all that. But uh, what the post structuralists really come uh, bring into the uh, whole uh, world is the fluidities that exist within these systems itself. They talk about a symbolic order, not really the structured order of rules and uh, norms, but how this symbolic order order is pushed through by uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, patriarch through this notion of male centric uh, uh, systems and institutions so what we call as phallocentric in terms of the post uh, structural uh, struct, uh, structuralist similarly helen uh, shiox uh, critiques uh, patriarchal system so she, uh, feminists have therefore borrowed and understood and uh, not just borrowed expanded actually on post structuralist uh, dimensions have, uh, and they have uh, critique the patriarchal system for creating binary oppositions. So interestingly post-structuralists uh, also talk about uh, sexualities in a range and in a continuum and feminists, different feminists have really uh, expanded that process in the current scenario. She says that man has coupled concepts and terms in pairs of opposite polar in which one has the authority over other and which is really true of a patriarchal system. For example, dichotomous pairs like active versus passive, so women are passive, men are active, writing versus uh, speaking, uh, uh, sun, verse, uh, sun versus uh, uh, moon, day versus night or high versus low. So why should high be uh, versus low? Can't the same go together? Uh, same way, why should we talk about day versus uh, night? They are both there existing and they all have their own realities, both the uh, dimensions. So why should we, you know, uh, uh, create a dichotomy? Or why should we say that writing is more important than speaking? Because it's known that women are more voluble and vociferous when they talk, but they are not very good at writing. This is the way norms are uh, percolated. So essentially post-structuralists critique this and feminists critique this and say patriarchies have created these kind of normative uh, understandings which are not real. They don't exist but they have been created to keep the symbolic order in place. Each of these pair, as I said, is associated to man versus women. So man is considered to be high, uh, uh, high achieving, active, light and positive. Uh, while women is considered to be passive, low, natural, dark and negative. That is uh, tending towards emotional outbursts, being uh, um, unpredictable are all uh, uh, um, uh, composition of being a woman. But uh, to be rational, to be positive is all that man is. So then there are these yardsticks and hierarchical op oppositions that are uh, created and men and women need to subscribe uh, to these to be actually recognized as men and women and so therefore that is a binary which is problematic because actually neither men nor women uh, adhere to these kind of uh, 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 stereotypes and uh, uh, that's the richness that post-structuralist uh, theorists can enable us to question and critique. The other, another uh, concept that uh, they bring in is deconstruction. It is a way to analyze text by taking into consideration the marginalized voices and contextual dimensions. By doing so, we do not accept the construct as given, rather we take social, historical and political context into consideration. So very interestingly, um, uh, uh, the word chamar is considered to be an abuse uh, because it is a caste name. But uh, in Punjab, a group has reinvented and created a Chamar band and uh, they've de deconstructed the word in itself to say it, it is not necessarily abusive because it's the meaning that has been given by the caste hierarchy uh, that needs to be changed. So deconstruction of words 
the way uh, literature is considered to be purist in the Brahminical notion, that is something that feminists in India are constantly now interrogating. And so Dalit feminists speak a different language, while uh, upper caste women uh, feminists speak a different language. So how uh, there is that dialogue dissonance as well that is happening using the notion of deconstruction and that's uh, is significant for us to keep in mind. They also critique, and I mentioned this earlier also, logocentricism, that is the binaries, and also to say that there is no logical order. To say that men are rational and logical is something which is a myth. And same way to say that women are uh, emotional and uh, they are not so thinking and they are more vocal and vociferous and care caring is something again which is a myth. And this has been proven time over. So post-structuralists argue that there is an assumption and these assumptions need to be bust by uh, you know taking out these categories of what is so called essential to be found in human beings and uh, therefore uh, binaries of uh, so called genders so post structuralists enable feminists to start looking at it from a differential point derrida argues that definitions categories and constructs vary from one particular historical political and social si situation to another and that's really true and uh, we can find that in a in in, in contextual realities in our own country because uh, the entire country has diversities of populations, diversities of cultures and uh, they all are constantly reinventing themselves in response to political situations and also social situations. So they all uh, come together and yet they are very different. So there are multiple discourses, there can be no single discourse to, uh, to, give, uh, to, to look at uh, different languages and incidents. And uh, what, what, but what is important to keep in mind that only few are heard, not all are heard. So Derrida enjoys that all should be heard and constantly deconstructed and thought over. Also subjectivity is something that, uh, that is important for us to keep uh, in mind when we are talking of post-structuralist uh, thought, that is conscious and unconscious thoughts and emotions of the in individual, her sense of herself and her ways of understanding her relation to the world. And that is something that the feminists have expanded from post-structuralist uh, uh, ideas and to also see that subjectivity is changeable, it is con uh, recontradictory and it is uh, constantly reconstructed constituted over time. So to say that only women change their minds is a myth. Everybody changes their mind because they are constantly uh, interrogating and uh, relating themselves to the situations that are uh, outside in, in the context in which they live in. Foucault explains, this is an interesting quote that Foucault says, to be more precise, we must not imagine a world of discourse divided between accepted discourse and excluded discourse or between the dominant discourse and the dominated one, but as a multiplicity of discursive elements that can come into play in various strategies. It is this distri uh, distribution that we must reconstruct with the things said and those concealed, the enunciations required and those forbidden that it comprise. Uh, this sounds very complex, but it's really actually simple. Never take it for granted if somebody is saying something or uh, the language that they are speaking, there can be differential meanings in each and every discourse that is happening and therefore there can be many many meanings that can be taken out of it. So that is what needs to be reconstructed and thought through as an ongoing process, as an ongoing discourse is what they bring in. So let's look at postmodernism uh, and some of the key tenets. The, which I'm not going to dwell too much on uh, because I've already explained some amount of it in the post-structuralism. -structural, -structural uh, Post-modernism, uh, some of the key tenets are the perception about stable, coherent self who knows what it thinks or what they, they think they do is something that's destabilized by the post-modernist thought. You can never be absolutely right and absolutely wrong is something that such uh, theorists talk about. The opinion that rational power, that is reason provides basis to objective, rare, reliable and universal truths is something which is a myth. 
that's what postmodernists talk about and in many ways uh, that needs to be understood because the more we interrogate the self then we have doubts and we say that no there is what is rationality in the end and what is rational is something we need to constantly interrogate the knowledge acquired through reason is always true and universal is something that uh, uh, you know uh, they question the notion that reason has transcendental and universal qualities which means that reason is exclusive of the historical social experiences is something that postmodernists do not agree with. For them it is an ongoing process, for them it is changeable, for them it is a dia dialogical and interactional, more than dialogical it is an interactional process. So if I am talking to somebody, I am getting influenced by somebody and I am rethinking or reconstructing my own realities is very significant in the postmodernist thought. Reason, autonomy and freedom are interconnected in a complex manner. That is something that is critical uh, that, pre, uh, that is brought forth by the postmodernist thought. The belief that power can be the claim uh, only through reason is something that, uh, that is questioned. Whenever truth comes in conflict with power, reason decides the case in favor of truth. Uh, thus, it cannot be, uh, that, thus it cannot triumph reason. At the same time, one talks about that uh, reason has to be thought about, discussed and before coming to a final uh, decision, uh, the dialogue and the discursive processes are critical in uh, postmodernist thought. The idea that science is the paradigm of true knowledge is questioned uh, in postmodernist thought. Uh, that is what is scientific, it is never neutral, it is never uh, objective. So for example, if somebody is doing a research on um, contraception for women, is it truly a, 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 a scientific and objective? Because uh, women's bodies are not the same. Uh, women's bodies do not behave in similar fashion. So the scientific approach to contracept, uh, contraception may not be the real uh, ways of uh, uh, you know addressing uh, uh, population control. Perhaps it is more important to have a process of discussion, discursiveness and thought out with the social political uh, realities of women and perhaps decision making needs to be taken by them rather than uh, by coming up with the scientific reasoning of that particular contraception. So that is something that needs to be understood and brought forth uh, in the forefront as postmodernist uh, thinkers would like us to understand. In order to mediate the knowledge produced by science, we use language. That is something postmodernist uh, thoughts uh, thinkers also uh, enjoyed and say that science cannot be a standalone. There is a need to start thinking beyond uh, uh, what scientific principles are in, in its ob so called objective positivist framework and the real situations outside need to be therefore interrogated and discussed before certain conclusions are drawn. So postmodernist uh, feminisms uh, are also this uh, branch which strives for equality for women within the category of women. So uh, till date it was usually the most of the theories talked about uh, patriarchy and privilege of men but postmodernist theories also talk about equality of women within the category of women. That is it identifies feminist perception of society and also says that uh, women are not a sim uh, single homogeneous category. Uh, it also examines how the social work affects different categories of not just women but also the sexualities of uh, women and the sexualities can range from very different uh, uh, practice of uh, sexual behavior and sexual orientation. Uh, it analyzes the role played by power and knowledge relationships uh, in shaping women's percep perception of social world. So I may be a heteronormative person because that is how uh, the hegemony plays with me and I am socialized and uh, brought up in, in, uh, in that manner because that is seen as the dominant ideology and a di dominant way of looking at my sexuality. So uh, the postmodernist uh, thinkers say that is not how it should be and therefore we need to understand and analyze how the social world creates these kind of uh, uh, notions of women and therefore flags diverse women and their experiences. Some of the uh, post-modern uh, feminists are Helen Shiox, Luna Irigaray, Julia uh, Kristeva who are some of the most prominent writers. The details you can always examine more because there is much more complexity in postmodern feminisms. Each one speaks from a different 
different domain so it can be psychoanalysis it can be uh, looking at uh, the marxist frame and expanding on it so uh, that can be done, uh, done uh, needs to be done in depth uh, using the references there is a dichotomy for feminist action when we use post uh, modernist uh, thoughts uh, because uh, there are difficulties there uh, the post modernist em emphasis on differences put feminist in a dilemma uh, even uh, though uh, this is acknowledging uh, that uh, there is diversity and multi multiplicity uh, the whole problem lies in the fact that if there is so much diversity if there is so much differences where is the common ground where is it that we can bring in bring women together because for movements uh, to happen as we go back to socialist feminism as the socialist feminist uh, feminists would like us to do is uh, uh, then subsume some of the diversities some of these um, uh, uh, categories within a larger notion of class and women uh, but that is something the postmodernist uh, feminists are uh, unable to really reconcile with because uh, there is uh, this whole notion that every woman uh, every uh, uh, person has a right to decide uh, what kind of uh, ideological position they come from. In that case, how do we mobilize people to come together is something that is uh, a question for most postmodern feminisms. The postmodern em emphasis on multiple and diverse voices is contradictory to feminist political action. Feminist political action demands unity. It demands some kind of sisterhood and some kind of action on defined women's issues. So suppose uh, we are talking of sexual violence, uh, uh, which is a discourse between the women's movement and also uh, uh, other sexuality uh, 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 groups. Uh, that if we lose the category of women because we are talking of sexualities and women uh, in that category is the heteronormative uh, normative, uh, 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 being then what happens to the other sexualities so who do we give precedence who do we give uh, 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 the um, hegemony in that case how do we reconcile this so we've won the women's right after a long haul and long struggle uh, so coming together of all sexualities also creates this dissonance and discomfort but how will feminist action move ahead or come together uh, to some common ground on the other hand post modernists argue that when feminists command unity among women for political uh, political action they tend to assume that women are a homogeneous group who share essentially same interests now uh, that is what uh, then in that case when you are unpacking deconstructing uh, uh, women as a category more than that sexuality as a uh, as a category of understanding people's life uh, then uh, it creates a different kind of uh, problem Problem. And uh, therefore, uh, how do we how do we talk about feminism? Uh, maybe some reconciliation is happening when we say feminisms instead of feminism, and we tend to say that there can be parallel processes and coming together on some common grounds. By uniting women as one category, feminists reflect the interests of higher status for women, but they ignore the interests of maybe the black women, the lesbians, and many other sexual minorities. So thereby, uh, uh, this becomes a critique of postmodernist feminist thought. So how do we uh, reconcile is something perhaps over time we will learn to do it. So in summation, uh, post-structuralism and post-modernist theories and ideas have uh, provided us with the, uh, the possibility of delving into diversities, differences of location and experiences of women. That is very rich because uh, so far we, we were stuck into the binaries of men and women and also a kind of Western uh, notion of uh, feminist movement. But uh, uh, post-modernism has enabled us to also talk about third world uh, uh, understanding of feminism to say that uh, in most of the countries that are there uh, in, in South Asian re uh, region and many other regions of the world their ways of looking at feminism and women's realities is very different so that is an opportunity and therefore these theories enable that process
Deconstruction has also been understood in this particular module that has enabled the development of new ways to examine hitherto hidden dimensions of oppression of women and question the male yardstick to create, create binaries of knowledge. So interestingly in academia you have this one particular way of looking at the world but the moment you look at it from a feminist lens the whole discourse of language changes, the whole discourse of uh, uh, the content and the text itself changes to say that where are women's concerns, where are the women's experiences, where are diverse women's experiences in this text. So new texts are rewritten and new uh, older texts are also uh, rewritten to create newer ways of looking at see a social phenomena or a story or a poetry or a narrative. Critique is uh, a critical, the critique also emphasizes, uh, uh, is, uh, is also says that there is this diversity and difference, so it divests uh, the feminist movement of politics because we land up doing more questioning and more uh, trying to understand these diversities and we don't tend to come together on specific issues of political action and that is very important for us to keep in mind. So common grounds are very difficult to build, uh, so political agency Agency is gets limited by postmodernist thought, and yet we continue to engage with it and uh, you know try and understand how we can bring in newer ways of doing feminist social work. Some of the references that I had mentioned uh, would be useful to look at postmodernist thought. You can look at Jane Flax, uh, Postmodernist and Gender Relations in Feminist Theory, which is a very uh, interesting article. Helen Shiok's The Language of Medusa is another one that you would want to interrogate and uh, read more uh, for you to take forward. And uh, Linda Martin Alcott's Politics of Postmodernist uh, Feminism. Uh, revisited is another uh, article that would be useful to understand postmodernist thought. Uh, thank you.